Speaking of blasting, Braves were like, you know, kind of as you said, a little hit and miss at times. Ozzy was a perfect example. Ozzy couldn't get anything going in Milwaukee until he hits the game winning home run. Right. He had a chance to game before right. bases loaded and two out against Devin Williams. And yeah, yeah, okay. Look, I understand that you're on the road, you're playing a really good team, you do win the series. You know, what are you complaining about? But at the same time, I'm not complaining. I'm just holding them. I, I'm saying I hold them to a higher standard, a higher standard than I've ever held any Braves team. Matter of fact, a higher standard than I've ever held any professional sports team mm. in my 51 years here in Atlanta. Oh, really? Yes. I'm, and now I'm with you and Carl, and I've talked about this. Carl gets on me because I'm always saying pitching, pitching, pitching. I still want another starting pitcher. And we'll talk if, if you feel this is the first step to the bullpen. I mean, it's not exactly, you know, dynamic names. These are guys that have struggled at one time or another. That's why they were either available. One went through waivers with the Rays. Other guys, you're giving away your 10th and your 26th best prospect to get. So we'll talk about that. But getting back to your initial point, this team is special. This team has got, this, even with all the things that fans were crying about the last couple of homes, the last homestand, team is blowing doors Still the best team in the big leagues. But I don't want to go into this postseason, John, like I did last year, where I got two good arms and a prayer. You know, to me, I just want to, I want to load up on starting pitching. To me, that's the only deficiency. Along well, what, do you, what do you have in this team right now? I mean, you have Spencer Strider. You have Charlie Morton. I guess we have Bryce Elder back. Correct. I guess. Yeah, Elder bounced back in a big I know. way. Okay, so we'll say we got those three. Okay. And maybe Rick Cram has got him to figure out how to wiggle that ball out of the strike zone a little but more because said, there was, you, it was a, more of that. You sent Soroka back to Triple A. Right. Because you got off days and you wanted a sense of it to get a start. And a bunch of roster moves. Too yeah, to I understood. Inside. I understood. Uh, but I, I, think, I think a lot of this, what... I don't want to get too deep into it right now, but I will just say I think a lot of the moves that it strikes me that Alex Anthopoulos is making are moves to set up moves. Perhaps, yeah. I mean, the, the one guy you just got was a Padre, mm -hmm. and the Padres might still like him. And if you're looking at Josh Hader, you know, what are you, what are you doing to set up moves here for a big move? Because I, I believe I'm of the opinion that Alex Anthopoulos could do whatever he wants He's the best executive in all of sports, I think, in the world right now. And so whatever he does, I'll back. But I have this gnawing sense that he is intending on not making a move for a pitcher, but two, possibly three pitchers, one of whom is going to be a big name. Let's hope so. Because, I mean, Taylor Hearn from the Rangers, uh, that went down. That was a cash deal mm -hmm. uh, earlier in the uh, the weekend. We talked about Yanni Chirinos from Tampa Bay. He's off of waivers. And he's had moments. I heard Andy and Randy talk about him. He's had some good moments in his, in his brief major league career. But... There's a reason why the guy, you know, fell and the, able, the Braves were able to get him in waivers. And then we talked about some of these other pieces. Pierce Johnson. Now, Pierce Johnson at one point was the closer for the Rockies until he was no longer the closer because he was Because he was no good. Right. right. He was no good. He had a, you know, he had a nice, he was kind of a, uh, you know, middle setup guy in San Diego. And I thought, well, if he was, you know, middle setup guy in San Diego and the Padres still like him and they want to shed salary, they're not going to sign. Again, they're not signing Hater at the end of the year. Right. He's going to be a free agent. And they want to get something for him. You know, what can the Braves offer, uh, you know, potentially if they were going to go after Josh Hader. So I, I think he's setting something up here. And we'll find out this week. And the reason, you said, well, why hadn't he made a big move then yet, John? Well, because nobody has made a big move. No. And that's, so yeah, you, you don't want to be first out of the gate. Right. And this this what I would consider is a nibble. If we're fish, it's a nibble. Okay, little bites. Okay, we're trying to land the big trying to land the big tuna. But this is a little a little piece, and we'll see. I mean, again, they also uh, took uh, Lewis Lickie. They DFA'd him, mm -hmm. and that wasn't working as well. Uh, Jesse Chavez goes from the 15 to ADL to the 60. 60. Because, remember, he came off the shin. That injury looked like he couldn't walk. Because you don't know what you're going to get right. with Freed. You don't know what you're going to get with Wright, yeah, if see, anything. And, and Wright, by the way, I think Braves fans, you got to look at Wright the way we looked at Soroka. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, you there's, do. there's no timeline that gets him out there. It could be a year. For the postseason. Oh, not to, to forget right. this. I am not expecting Kyle Wright to be part of this team. Right. And that's why I want to get another starting pitcher. So we've got, and look, and if somebody, yes, somebody would be sitting for the five games of the of the NLDS potentially. But when you get into the playoffs, NLCS and beyond, this team has run out of starting pitching two of the last three years. Could have beat the Dodgers in the COVID year of 2020. Mm -hmm. Didn't have enough starting pitching. Yeah, three a three one lead. <laughs> right. Don't remind me. I do a bullpen start. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I'll beat up at that pitching staff's all beat up. They got to get some help in there. And, but that felt and like, we all know that. But for instance, you know, when guys, we we talk about this, and we, we've got the full spectrum. We're going to talk about where Braves fans are. At. John's got some opinions. Want to hear what you had a caller over the weekend? I know they got you fired up. Yes, he did. But two ways of looking at it. I mean, all is well, like Kevin Bacon and Animal House. Nothing to see here. No, I mean, we know we're good, but why are we saying, yeah, and so and so's coming back? And if I don't want any ifs, I don't want any X factors in the equation. I want to know exactly what I've got. 
I think there's too many variables in the starting equation as far as pitching. So that's what I want to remedy in the next few weeks or next few days, I should say. Well, let's start with the, the number one thing is you don't have a number four starter. Correct. That's And that's what Braves fans got to wrap their head around. You don't know what Wright's going to be. You don't, you don't know, know how Freed's, Freed's going to come back. Right. And right. Is, is Soroka going to be part of your plans? Are you going to send him down? Are you going to trade him? Because one thing, keep this mm-hmm. in mind, guys. Michael Soroka is very tradable. He doesn't make he makes no money. Right. But that is. But what does a team look at him and say? Hey, he had a great run, but he's just not the same well, dude since I, the two were killed. Well, but uh, you, you're going to do the same thing the Braves are going to do, which is, are you willing to take a flyer on him? Because the mm-hmm. one thing you got to be careful if you're if you're Alex Anthopoulos and you, know, you ship Michael Soroka off or something, and in two years Michael Soroka's starting the All Star game, and you're going, what the hell did I do? I think that I, look, I'm not trying to be mean spirited. I don't think Soroka's going to be the Soroka you guys. And he may not. No, be. no, no. I understand yeah. that. I'm just saying. That there is that risk, right? You know, because you don't know. But and we said this last week, just because John knows his Braves history because he's been here. Even going back to the Sherholtz days, you can really you got to look long and hard. Maybe with the possible exception of Jermaine Die, to see anybody that this team gave up on at the wrong time. Yeah, some folks wanted to hold on to Andrelton Simmons, mm-hmm. but I mean, let's be honest, right. this team has really, no matter who the general manager, even throw Copelell in the mix, well, this team's I never mean, been I fleeced. Yeah, I, I, I wish we would have held on to Kevin Gossman. <laughs> yeah, but Gosman, you know, Gosman, you got him on the cheap. He came back, did the job, and then he pumped up his market value here, and you I said, don't. we'll let you go. Yeah. I'm with you. That, that was before. I, I don't know where we're at as far as the mindset of the company because, remember, the Braves are going, they, they're, they're their own separate entity now, a spinoff of Liberty. Did you buy any stock, by the way? Yes, I had the preferred A stock, which I now have this stock. Yeah, yeah, well, and then, yeah. then of course, my brother did too. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm happy. It's yeah. good. And I think they're going to be I, I doing the same thing with why, Formula One, I, too. I didn't want it to be my fault. <laughs> See, if the team doesn't win now, I'm yeah. going to you. All right, Bell. Yeah. If you're a stockholder, I'm calling you on the carpet here. Well, I mean, it's not like the Packers. You know, it's not like everybody gets a piece. But there's there's some stuff out there on the float. But it's worth it's making money. It's worth some loot. Oh, I'm not saying it's yeah. not worth money. I'm, right. I'm just saying. Don't jinx it. <laughs> right. <laughs>